Welcome to a new episode of a first attempt film cast. Hey everyone, welcome back to First Attempt Filmcast. It is Halloween, happy Halloween. Today we are covering a 2014 movie called Creep to celebrate the spooky holiday. Uh, Creep is a horror with a little comedy spice thrown in there. It's available on Netflix right now. And uh, I'm going to give you some stats on it. It's got a 3.3 out of 5 on Letterboxd, a very... Spooky 3.3 out of 5 on Letterbox, 89% Rotten Tomato score with the critics, and a 65% audience rating. It was released June 23rd, 2015 in the USA, according to Google, and it's starred and directed by Patrick Cack Bryce, and uh, also starring is Mark Duplass. Mo, do you have a professional negative review for me? Yeah, I do. Um... Chris Bumbay, Bumbray from Joe Blow's Movie Network decided to say, occasionally inspired but predictable and all too familiar, a 5 out of 10. I have something a little more positive from Isaac Feldberg over there at We Got This Covered. Uh, he said, Creep will tickle your funny bone and screw with your head even as it rips your nerves to shreds. He gave it an 8 out of 10. Damn, he had a freestyle for that one? <laughs> yes. Uh, we're joined today once again with our favorite guest, Zach Ligatezzi. Howdy. Congratulations on 100 downloads. Yes, the podcast has reached 100 downloads with absolutely no marketing. Um, can I give you guys a good corny joke, movie related to get us started? Yes, please. I told one about Superman the other day, and now this one's about Batman, so I guess they're sort of just becoming more superhero themed. But here it is, here it is. What do you call it when Batman skips church? What, Jay Neeston? Mo, do you know? No. Christian Bale. Oh, that's funny. That one's actually really, really funny. Are you guys going trick-or-treating? Uh, no, are you? No. But I am going to dress up and just chill around the crib. What are you going to dress up as? No, I'm just kidding. Ah. <laughs> and chill. What if I just did that? What if I dressed up as, like, Batman and I was just doing nothing? I would just chill like, on the couch. On your phone? Yeah, I'd just on TikTok all day. You keep, the, you keep the cowl on even though it's kind of obstructing your view of the the screen. I know. Oh, well, speaking of Batman, I went to the, the Batman set when they were filming. And um, I got sucker punched by Robert Pattinson. No, dude, that was so sad. I tried to fight back, I just couldn't. You have a huge bruise. I know. Well, for real though, that was some cool shit. I hopped on Instagram, I looked at your story, and you had taken a picture of a Gotham license plate, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I know, that's awesome. It's cool that they were filming there, like, it made sense, but um, I think they were just filming uh, Zoe Kravitz scenes. It got Here. delayed, didn't it? Yeah, oh, it got delayed. <coughs> 2022 like or something. It's a shame. That's a long time from now. 2022? Holy shit. Yeah, it is. Neither of you guys watched The Mandalorian, do you? Mm-mm. No. It began today. Oh, speaking of Batman, again, it's supposed to, like, th- they're taking material from the, I think, the long Halloween or something. Correct me if I'm wrong. So it's kind of cool how... Bro, it's Halloween right now. It's almost 12 a.m. No, it's really not almost 12 a.m. But, uh, you know, see, it's a full moon tomorrow night as well. A blue Is moon. Really? So if I turn into a bat, I mean, if wait, no, if I turn into a werewolf, and speaking of wolves, my favorite wolf right now is Mark Duplass. Peach, Peach. Peach. <laughs> Peach. 
Um, so, uh, would would you get? Would you get, first off? Would you guys think of the film? If I were Zach Lucatesi, I'd give it a two and a half star rating. But I'm not. Jaden Easton, I give it four stars. It was a good movie. I enjoyed it quite good. a lot. I've probably seen this movie like, oh, like at least five times. Oh wow. And, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm a huge fan of the Creep series, and I gave it a four and a half. I think it's amazing for what it is. Series? Yeah. How many are there? There's just two, but the, the, there's a third in development. It's in the last one. I uh, I'm kind of the opposite. I didn't. Uh, I this is the second time I've seen it, and I, I didn't really vibe with it. Damn. Why? Why not? Um, I don't know. It just like for being a horror movie, I think it focused way too much on um jump scares and like i'm not uh, horror movies like don't have to look like obviously it's in the name but like it does they don't have to like scare you you know what i mean like obviously i love movies like reanimator and stuff like that and those aren't really scary at all but um it definitely felt like like you can't really enjoy this one at, at least in my opinion there's like not a lot of um like cheesiness or anything to it and then like, if it's trying to go for scares like i thought it went about it in a kind of a weak way Kind of in a comedic way, dude. I was I was laughing sometimes. Yeah. Like when when Joseph would scream, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. I think it's like I think it's a very I think if I would just consider it a horror movie, I would say it's a really bad one. But it's like it's such a fun time. And then get, when shit hits the fan, you're like, okay, maybe it's not supposed to be this funny. And as a first viewer man it's really interesting i'm like what is gonna happen next i just like the balance between the comedy and then the tension building in that third act which uh, jump here did get you guys because i have one in mind um when he first brings out peach fuzz okay actually wait no no no, no. when he chases him at the end he's like standing in front of the door <laughs> oh uh, the one that the only one that got me this one was like the only one that got me the first time i watched it too was um just at the end, like uh, when he's like resuming the footage, and then he like screams at the camera, and then he screams like IRL. Oh, like he scares himself. Right. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The tubby time jump scare got me when he pretended he was drowning himself, and then I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why. Tubby li- tubby time is the tagline on Letterbox. That's weird. Is it actually? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. I, that's actually really cool. Um, if I had to like choose an effective part of the movie, though, it's definitely um, it's the part that's on the poster, and it's just um where he's like, it's just pretty much his silhouette at the top of the stairs, and he's like, hey, saying like, hey, come on, one more whiskey and stuff like that. Like that kind of gave me um, Zodiac vibes, like when he was in the uh, basement. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I thought that part was pretty good. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's good enough to put on the poster, right? It invokes. Kind of heebie-jeebies. Yeah. And if you look at the Creep 2 poster, it's, just, it's like the same same thing, but it's you can see his face. He has a beard in 2, right? Yes. See, the thing is, the narrative for Creep 1, the script that we watched, it's like, um, it's really grounded, and it doesn't, everything that happens is like, all right, that might, that could happen to someone. That could. I mean, if you're a freelance filmmaker, I mean, I'm pretty sure you you have to film some weird ass shit. Yeah, but I mean, like, I don't know. I felt the main character was pretty dumb sometimes. I don't know. Like, it's like late at night. He has to go home, and he's like, "Hey, get take t- take a shot of whiskey, and then I'll send you home." You know, down a hill, and I don't know. It's just like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, you know there's more than than meets the eye because it's called Creep and, you know, it's going to be kind of scary and a thriller. But also his story that he's, uh, you know, he has a brain tumor and he only has a couple months to live. His demeanor just doesn't fit like someone who would be terminally ill, you know? And how he keeps hugging him. Yeah. I mean, like, think about it. Like, the way that they implemented comedy to this film, I think it's great. Like, at the end... When he drugs Joseph, and he, for some reason Joseph puts his hand in his in his pants, it's just like things like that. It's like, come on, it's so stupid, but it's funny. And um, the scene when uh, he 
he keeps when Yosa when Yosa keeps running away from uh, I forgot his name. Aaron. Yeah, Aaron. He keeps running away from him. Like when they're in the woods and he's trying to show him uh, the creek. He runs away from him and he scares him. Like he keeps jump scaring him. I mean, of course, it's, it's going to come up as stupid to the viewer, but I mean, it's just the repetitiveness of it. I think that's what I like about it. Yeah. yeah. Like, they know that it's getting they know it's getting old, but it's still it's still working. Also, it's annoying Aaron and he because he doesn't want to be freaked out constantly. <laughs> oh yeah, Patrick Bryce. All right, listen. So like, this movie Creep. It's like literally. I feel like it's a movie that then these guys like obviously like making like weird and wild narratives, right? But I feel like it's a movie that anyone could have made. Like I feel yeah. Like it's like it's so you just need. to two people that's yeah. all there were there's two people maybe it wouldn't be as good but i was thinking during it i could do this right or i could try yeah for sure it's like look they took that found footage genre and they made it work so well like that makes me realize that movies like paranormal activity they the first one is like yeah people consider the first one good but like the rest of them they're all they're all fucking trash when yeah they could, they could tell better narratives with found footage movies like like i put this creep like among chronicle like blair witch you know it's like have you ever seen on vhs no but i've heard it's great um there are parts that are great um but uh there's a part in uh this one that heavily like uh, it's weird i've seen two found footage movies of like like someone being like recorded in their sleep with their own camera i don't know um, that happened in uh vhs and i just Kind of gave me that, but um, I highly recommend that. It's a good found footage one. What do you guys think the found footage aspect adds to the story? I mean, it uh-huh. makes sense for the narrative, right? To these, like... Uh, well, like, just... I don't know. Let's just talk about that, you know? I think it makes it more real because it's a guy who's filming something for someone who wants to be filmed. Yeah, so... I feel like, like if I, he, I, Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, yeah. So if, if they... Because I think, like, the only thing that breaks that vibe is that he started recording before he got to his house. Like, imagine if they just started the film right when he's like, all right, so I want you to record me for my son. You know? I don't know. Wow. Yeah, I think that would have worked better. Especially, yeah. um, like, in the first part, like, when he's recording before he gets to the house, like, he's driving his car, right? And then he's, like, filming stuff outside of the car, so it's just kind of weird. It makes it seem like he's not paying attention to the road. So that kind of, like, took me out of it immediately. So if it would have started, like, when he just got to the house, I think that would have worked a lot better. They yeah. need to commit to it being, you know, like, handheld camera, because if, if, if the only... <laughs> recorded footage was going to be like you know him documenting joseph's um sort of baby diaries and then on he for sure wouldn't have recorded the like landscape as he's driving you know he's getting paid to record a guy so he wouldn't record until he gets to the guy yeah that's like one of my worst fears like what happened to aaron at the end when uh, joseph was staring outside of his house and he watched him sleep I definitely, like, he's, at the end when he was, like, chasing him outside, did he even have the knife in his hand? Because, like, he just went outside and he, like, heard rustling in the bushes and stuff. And he's like, Joseph? And he just kept walking out and trying to follow him. I don't even know if he had a weapon. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not. I don't remember. So do you think his sister Angela knows he's a murderer or does she just know he's a weird guy? I think she knows he's a weird, weird guy because then she referenced that. Uh, she said that my brother has problems or something along that lines. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Every one of those tapes was a new person. Yeah. If you, I'm not, I don't want to spoil Creep 2, but Creep 2 goes into that a little bit more. But hey, one of the underrated scenes is like when, when Aaron, when Patrick Bryce's character is in the bathroom and he's like calling his, he thought he was calling his wife and it ended up being a sister, right? And um, she was like, you got to leave the house. And then he was like, I can't find my fucking keys, lady. <laughs> or, yeah. Yeah, it is like that. She was totally not being understanding of the situation. <laughs> Definitely and, uh, one, one of the more like, um, interesting parts of the filmmaking, in my opinion, um, was when uh, 
the, when he was like, hey, uh, can I tell you something? He's like, can you stop the camera? And he just like closes the lens. So it's like not recording, but it's recording the audio. And so it's just like a black screen and you just listen to the audio. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It shows his, the, uh, the protagonist's motive, too. He, In case Joseph said some weird shit, uh, you know, he was still filming. And he did. He did say yeah. I think he talked about raping Angela. Yeah. So he's talking about his his wife, which was ended up being his sister. Do you think he actually made that story up, or? No, I think I think it's real. Damn, I never thought of it that way. That's insane. I always thought he was just bullshit. That's a weird story to make up, right? Uh, yeah, that is. Is if you want. He, he was making a bunch of other stuff up. I mean, he rented the the whole house was rented. But if he wants to sell himself as normal and like, or maybe that's not even his goal because he could have killed Aaron earlier. You know what I mean? There's, he likes to manipulate him first. So maybe he enjoys terrifying him. Yeah, he definitely does. That's that's why he told him that weird story. I don't know if it's made up or not. I liked uh, I liked the whole Chekhov's gun thing when like right at the beginning when he sees the axe. And he's like, huh? And then obviously at the end of the movie, uh, you know, gets axed. But I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, he blatantly says, come on. Tell, he's like, tell me, Aaron, for a second, did you think this guy's going to kill me with that axe? Yeah. Which, by the way, I personally, I can't relate to, like, seeing an axe in someone's yard in a tree stump and, like, freaking out. I, I don't think that would be that weird. Yeah, me neither. Especially, like, if he's, like, ringing the doorbell and he expects the person to be inside and he just turns around and sees an axe, he's not going to get, like, freaked out like that. They paid a little too much attention to it, yeah. Sort of, uh... It would have been wilder if they would, if he not really acknowledged the axe, but the camera passed it and he walked up the stairs and when he came back down the stairs, the axe was gone. Mm-hmm. And then that would foreshadow, like, maybe he put it somewhere else. And then that's why he came back at the end. Dude, and yeah, dude, Joseph's right. Like, why didn't he turn around at the end when he got, when he got axed in the head? Oh, that bothered me. He didn't oh. hear him, like, putting on the mask or anything? Oh, yeah, and especially, like, he, you saw the axe, like, drop from his coat, like, onto the ground. Like, you'd definitely hear something like that. Man, I love that they kept that scene silent, so it just felt even more real. Of course, it's footage. Never mind. There's no music throughout, but you get what I mean. Yeah. It's not that I want to see behind the scenes of this movie. There's no suspense that they expect from, uh, like, or auditory suspense. You know, you sort of just build it yourself in your own head by watching and anticipating what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Mo, what were you saying about behind the scenes? I wonder, I wonder how, like, the behind the scenes, uh, like, how they made the film. Because I feel like it was probably, like, a really small production. And yeah. It was cool. I could have watched it online. Mark Duplass, right? Um, that He's generally in, like, super low-budget stuff. He's in Bombshell. Um, he's in what? Bombshell. Oh, okay. I just saw that. He's in many other smaller films, but that was the top movie result on Letterboxd under his name. Paddleton like, was one of my favorite movies of last year um, with Mark Duplass and um, I forget his name. Ray Romano. And it's interesting because Mark Duplass's character actually has cancer in that movie. Huh. Yeah, so if you want to cry, go watch Paddleton. It's really, really sad. Wait, Paddleton? Yeah. I was thinking of the one with the bear, and I'm like, somebody has cancer. It's a Paddington, and then there's Paddleton. Yeah, I don't know. You guys, okay. This is off, off topic. Did you see Kanye gifted his wife, Kim, with the hologram of her father who died? Yeah, oh. I did see that on Twitter. I don't know, I found that kind of weird. That's like the Tupac hologram that they did at Coachella that one year. Mm. I don't know. 
Oh, Mark Dupont was also in Tangerine. Oh, was he? He's, that was super low budget. Wasn't that the one that was filmed on an iPhone? Yeah, the budget was $100,000. And I, uh, I read some, like, he did an, Sean Baker did an interview with Academy that that $100,000 went to the to the cast. Oh, and he wow. had to sell his iPhones at the end of production so he could afford rent. Wow, that's crazy. Hey, here's some more Twitter news. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this after. The first trailer for Michael Bay produced pandemic thriller called Songbird has arrived in the movie imagines a dystopian future in which COVID-19 has mutated, keeping the world on lockdown for a fourth year. What do you think? It's too soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And why? Um, I don't know. Has, has Michael Bay ever done anything of, like, actual substance? Transformers? I mean, I like Transformers. Actually, I was talking to a guy today, and he said he knows Michael Bay's mom, and his, even his mom isn't a big fan of his work. He has things to say that aren't nice. I mean, I want to be a fan of my own work. You know, if I'm Michael Bay, I mean, come on. He has, like, a good... He did... Wait, he had Bad Boys, right? Yeah, he did Bad Boys. Yeah, but his mom know. doesn't like his work. Oh, he's a producer on A Quiet Place also. He made was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The live action one. Shit's Just good. Purge movies. Um, I don't know. See, Mom. he's attached to A Quiet Place too, and I'm thinking like, dude, those that those the Quiet Place one, it's like underrated in terms of intensity. Like that shit's mad intense. Yeah, I wouldn't it's... consider it a horror film though. I mean, what would you consider it? Uh, you know what. <laughs> I would consider it a horror. Well, I guess I it. guess like the horror is like the last genre on Letterboxd mainly says it's science fiction and drama. I I'd say that, but it definitely has horror moments. I mean, like I've seen horror films that aren't really because like, I feel like the definition of a horror film is like kind of messed up. People think a horror film is like just like aliens and not aliens, sorry, like demons and possession and stuff, but that's not what it is. Right. And gore. Yeah, and gore. I mean. Maybe that was a definition like 40 years ago. Yeah. Like Dr. Sleep. Have you guys seen Dr. Sleep? No. It's underrated. You guys should check it out. Um, yeah, that's like people were saying that it wasn't really a horror film, and I, I, I disagree. I think it's really scary. Oh, no, sorry. Not really scary, but the, the vibe of it's the vibe of it is terror. Huh. Any movie that's labeled a psychological thriller usually has some horror element to it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, hold on, I want to see if this is even labeled, because everybody says, um, have you guys uh, heard or seen the movie Come and See? Yeah, I've seen it. Um, would you would you label that a horror movie? You know, I, I did. Like, when I first watched it, I was like, yeah, I get why people were saying that, because it is scary in this sense. Of how it depicts war. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't be like, oh, we're about to watch this horror film. Like, if I'm, like, telling to my friends, oh, let's watch this movie, I'm not going to be like, oh, this is a scary movie. I'm going to tell them that this is a war film. Right. But yeah, the content it's not like you'd it, say, like, yeah. come and see is a horror. I mean, it's not like you'd say, like, hey, it's Halloween, let's watch come and see, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. What are your guys' top horror films? Top horror films? Um... That's a tough one. I like Psycho. I like Get Out. Those Rope? Are... No, Rope. wait. I think I like Strangers on a Train. Is that horror? I think that's horror. Okay, no. no, I wouldn't say that's horror. Hitchcock is not horror. It's just its own thing. I'd say Psycho's horror. Okay, maybe. Yeah, you're right. Psycho's, like, awesome. Like, everybody says, you know, well, I guess I haven't seen Vertigo, so I can't comment on that. Like, Rear Window and stuff like that. Everybody says that's his best, but, like, Psycho is just, like, amazing. I love Psycho so much. My mom has ROS, and we went to see T Michael Bay's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie together, and she couldn't sit still in the theater. ROS is Restless Leg Syndrome. 
and so she had to walk out of the theater and like you know walk around but she never came back i think she just wasn't enjoying the movie hmm. um all the horror movies i have i have eight horror movies rated five stars and they are the shining psycho uh eraser head but i'm not sure if i would label that horror myself um Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Evil Dead, uh, Videodrome, An American Werewolf in London, and Friday the 13th, uh, Part 4. So that's probably, like, my top eight. Let's see mine. Yeah, I gave The Shining a five stars, The Lighthouse a five stars, Hereditary a five. The Conjuring 1 is severely underrated. I gave that four and a half. Texas yeah, Chainsaw Massacre a four and a half. Creep 1 and 2 a four and a half. The, dude, The Lodge? Holy shit. Have you guys seen The Lodge? No, that's on Hulu, right? Yeah, it's on Hulu. It's so... It's so twisted and... Dude, it's so good. It's like hereditary. See, the thing... Have you have you seen Goodnight Mommy? Yes. It's the same director, right? And they filmed it before hereditary. And it has, like, kind of, like... This, it has, like, a similar vibe to hereditary, but... I don't know. I don't know. I can't tell which one's more fucked up. They're both really, really fucked up. Um, um I did not like <clears throat> Goodnight Mommy. I didn't either. I didn't. I didn't like it either. Um, oh, I think you like two stars. What do you guys think of the birds? That's another Hitchcock one. I really. I've always loved that one. I haven't um, seen it. I'd have to rewatch it, but I think it's a little overrated. Dude, Saw. Saw is so good, isn't it? Yeah, dude. James Wan directed that. I had no idea. Yeah, that's where he. That's where he started it, wasn't it? I think it wasn't it like originally like a film school project or something. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, that's that's misunderstood genius right there because he went on to make some like works that are like just you know celebrated. I mean, Saw is popular, but I feel like some people just don't give it respect. They think it's a cheesy horror flick, which maybe it is a little, but it's just it's good. It's good. I think the first one's good. I'm not a fan of the series after that though. Well, I haven't seen anyone past the first. See, I'm looking at like horror, the horror films I've watched, and I feel like horror has like this. It's so broad in what kind of stories it could tell. Yeah. Like Bavarium. Bavarium is a good film that I saw. Uh, Green Room, Train to Busan. Have you guys seen Mother with Jennifer Lawrence? No, I want to. Yeah, that's that's a really good film. Um, Would you say uh, The Silence on the Lambs is overrated? So, yeah, dude. I didn't. I think it, I get it. I get that it's good, but I mean, come on. It's like I don't know. I don't. I didn't see what's so special about it. Um. Yeah, I think it's a little overrated, but I uh, still one of my. I think that the scene where he like uh, tucks his wang between his legs and he dances in the air, I just still think that's like one of my favorite scenes in a horror movie ever. Dude, I do the same thing when I wake up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man, other horror movies. Uh, do are you guys a fan of like any like but like pre psycho like fifties, forties, thirties horror Dr. movies? Caligari, bro, the Cabinet of Doctor Caligari. Are you a fan of that? No. <laughs> yeah. Put me um, to sleep. You guys seen Rosemary's Baby? Yes, I love it. Rosemary's Baby. Very good. It's very, very good. I feel like that's like the OG. Dude, the cover. So like, okay. Rosemary's Baby is as close as Mother. In a way. It's like, the two are very similar in a lot, in a lot of ways, but very different. The, I think the Exorcist is like really overrated also. Overrated? Yeah, it's good, but come on. I the first time I watched it, it was like in horrible conditions. Like I, for some reason, like before I started like really like thinking about movies as an art form, and I was just I was in a state of like oh, I just want to watch more classic movies. Um, I did this with um, 2001: A Space Odyssey as well. I would like be sick home from school, and it'd, it'd, it'd be like super sunny out, and like it'd be hot in my room, and I just like watch uh, the, I watch The Exorcist, and it just didn't grab me at all, and then I feel like if I watch it at night with like maybe a window cracked or something, I'd like totally enjoy it. So I don't know. I remember, yeah, that's I did this. Kind of, I was kind of the same thing. Like I would watch like I watched Goodfellas on my phone for the first when I first oh. got into the film. I was like, all right, I'm gonna put this on my phone. But now I can never imagine doing that. Yeah, um, I used to watch movies on my phone a lot. I think I stopped. Yeah, last October, like a year ago. That's the last time I watched a movie on my, on my phone. 
No, when I watch a movie, I want to be away from, like, phone and notifications. I'm going to, like, you know, put it in my Blu-ray player. Yeah, yeah exactly. Now I'm like that. But before, I didn't give any, I didn't give a shit. And I, I cringe at myself back then. Like, I was like, I don't know. What was I going to say? I have a good question for you guys. What are, who, which directors are killing the game in terms of horror right now? Robert Eggers. Yeah, Robert Eggers, I would agree. Wait, pretty much OG. Isn't he a critic? No, no he's Robert... Roger Ebert is a oh, critic. Yeah. Robert Eggers did um, The Vich and uh, The Lighthouse. Okay. He's doing Nosferatu, which is going to be awesome. I think, yeah, Robert Eggers for sure. Ari Aster for sure. I feel like if he has like one more good one, like, yeah, I don't... Yeah. yeah. He'll be insane, yeah. Like, uh, James Wan, I get that he. I feel like, look, all the Conjuring movies that he, and like the horror films that he di- himself directed are, are really good. Like, Insidious is good. Did he direct um, Sinister? Who directed Sinister? Um, I don't know. I can't remember. Like the Conjuring one is like the per- one of the perfect Halloween movies in my opinion. Like you can put that shit on, you'll have a good time. Sinister Scott Derrickson. Who also oh. did Doctor Strange. Hmm. Oh wow. Um, um, yeah, what, else? Gonna say? what about Jordan and Peele? I've only seen Get Out, and when I watched it, like, forever ago, when it first came out, like, I wasn't a fan, but that's because, like, I was stupid. So I feel like if I rewatch it now, uh, I'd like it. And also, Us seems pretty cool, but I don't know. I, I think it's it. cool. He does a lot to put, you know, blackface's rep- representation in the horror genre, and, it, like, also insert relevant themes. Um is it- isn't it amazing that Daniel Kaluuya was nominated for Best Actor for Get Out? That's good, honestly. Yeah, that's He's awesome. a good actor. He was so good in that film. I could see that movie like, not making the love it deserves. I mean, look, I was the same when I first saw it. I was like, all oh, right, it's all right. But then I, when I rewatched it, I understood, like, dude, this is insane. Like, the yeah. storytelling. And this is his directorial debut. Like, that's not, was it, wait, was it nominated for Best Picture? I, I think, think it was, so. right? So, in Jordan Peele's other film, Us, uh, that came out last year, if 2019 wasn't so packed, I would say that Adelaide Wilson would have deserved a Best Actress nod as well. Lupita, right? What did you say? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lupita Nyong'o? Yeah, she should have been nominated as well. Oh, my bad. That's I'm thinking of the character. Yes, uh, yes. And then uh, have you, another director I think is killing it right now is Jennifer Kent. Uh, what did she do? She did uh, the Nightingale and the Babadook. Oh, I love the Babadook. Babadook's cool. The Nightingale is also like the come and see, like it's like kind of like come and see, where it's like I wouldn't classify it as a horror film, but the content of it, the content itself of the film is it's really hard to watch. Huh. Okay, okay. cool. That's on Hulu, right? Yeah, it's on Hulu also. Hulu, Hulu has a lot of good shit now. Yeah. Are um, y'all ready? You ready for our special Halloween segment? Yeah. Let's do it. I simply want to know what the scariest moment of each of your lives has been, was, is. Oh, I have I have a good one. You guys could go first. Uh, no, go ahead. I, I don't really, I can't think of one right now. All right, I guess I'll go. So this was like junior year. Um, there's probably scarier ones, but this is the most recent one. This is so stupid. Don't do what I did. I was walking on ice in a lake and I fell through. Oh, wow. And I seriously thought that those were my last moments. That or, shit was so... Oh, my God. Were you with anyone? Yeah, I was with a, I was with a group of people, but they all fell through. How deep was the lake? I was able to... I broke ice, so I kept breaking ice with my fist. And I was able to climb up that piece of ice and I just I ran for it. Dang, dude. I was... I got a rush from that. I still have, like... Sometimes, like, no joke. Sometimes I'm like, dude, what if, like, this entire thing is fake and I actually died in that pond? <laughs> that's how... That's how... That's how traumatic that experience was for me. Holy that shit. That explains why 2020 is so bizarre. I know. What if I'm fucking in hell right now? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is hell? <laughs> well, I guess go and vote for... 
Satan. Um, <laughs> if I had to pick a scariest moment of my life, I don't know. I feel like I've had others, but like definitely one that like really shook me up. So, um, I was at a like I think it was Fourth of July, like cookout thing, um, or uh, bonfire. It was a bonfire, um, with some friends uh, in like middle school, um, and my brother and uh, one of our friends. Um, or just like generally being a nuisance and they, this was like it was pitch black out um, and they went to like a neighbor's house um, and just like I don't know they were just like being really weird and pestering the neighbors and then like they were like drunk young people so then um, we couldn't find my brother or the friend so me and my one friend went looking for them and we had our flashlights on and then this freaking uh, he must have been like He's probably in his 20s, and he was just like this gigantic freaking. He was like kind of fat. I don't know. He just looked like a football nerd, but he was just like really huge. And it's like pitch black, and he's like ramming like right towards us. I'm like, whoa, dude, what the hell? And he thought he was, he, he thought we were my brother and his friend. Um, and he was probably, he was, we thought he was going to beat us up or something. It was freaky, but just like having someone like a big freaking figure chase after you like really late at night. I don't know. It was weird. When you when you're scared, you ever have that feeling that you could run forever away from something like the adrenaline rush? Yeah, like when you're ding dong to someone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's like a top. That's like a top tier feeling. The sad thing is, now that we're older, like we can't do it and get away with it now because we're not little irresponsible kid. Uh, oh. How about you, Jane? What's the scariest one of your? Life. I can't really think of like um I, I guess I could rack my brain for a moment I've experienced, but I have like a little story if you if you'd like to hear. Kind of relates sure. to me. So um I was born in the town a town called Mattoon, Illinois. And my um my grandpa lived there for a while on my dad's side. Uh so he had the last name Easton as well. So in this town of Mattoon, it was it's just a, like sm- a small town in Illinois, but there was there was a guy in the loose called the Mad Gasser, the Mad Gasser of Mattoon, also known as the Anesthetic Prowler. Okay, it was the name they the public gave him the name. It was given to him, and they believed him to be responsible for a series of gas attacks that occurred in this town. And this was during the mid 1940s. And there were more than two dozen separate cases of gassings reported to police over the span of two weeks and, like, reported sightings of this guy. So his victims, the Mad Gaster's victims, they reported smelling strange odors in their homes, and they were uh, soon followed by symptoms such as paralysis of, like, their whole body. And I guess the Mad Gaster would uh, stare at them as they're, like, frozen through the window and just, like, look at them while they're gassed. My grandpa told me that story. You can look it up. Thanks for your permission. I know. Has, uh, has there ever been a movie that has, like, genuinely, like, scared you? Pen- the old Pennywise used to freak me out. So I'd say the original It. Understandable. Freaking, uh, I remember when I was younger... Um, I would watch like horror movie clips on YouTube because I wasn't actually allowed to watch real horror movies. Uh, just like try and get a fix, I guess. And um, I remember seeing the scene where like he was in the uh, who someone was in the shower and he just like broke through the floor. Uh, that, that, that's definitely pretty freaky. I don't think I have like a specific scene. Actually, I have like one thing where it was um, in Paranormal Activity three at the end. This guy, he gets his, like, back snapped into his, he, like, snap his back. I guess there's a clip of it. And that, that was, that disturbed me horribly. Mm. I was, and also, the Darth Maul from Insidious. I was, I was slightly disturbed by Aaron getting axed in the head in this movie, Creep. Yeah, that freaked me out the first time I saw it. For me, like, recent, 
uh, movie experiences. Um, like, later David Lynch movies get pretty freaky. Um, like, Mulholland Drive probably has, like, the scariest movie scene, like, anything. Um, I'm not going to spoil it, because I, I have either of you seen Mulholland Drive? Yeah, I saw it a while ago. I don't um, remember anything. Uh, I don't know if you remember the diner scene. Um, no. Don't tell me. I'm just going to rewatch it. I don't oh, want to yeah, risk it. No, I won't spoil it. But, um, there's a scene that uh, takes place at a diner. And it, like, perfectly, like, captures, like, I, I don't know, like, obviously everyone's nightmares are probably different. But, like, that is the closest I've seen, like, any, like, it just seems so, like, similar to, like, a nightmare I would have. It's, like, insane to see that, like, actually captured so well on move, on film. Um, and then Lost Highway, there's just, like, some of the cinematography and stuff. You just, like, really, you get a really eerie feeling. So, like, in terms of recent stuff, that's, like, freaked me out. Probably those. Um, and then, like, when I was younger, I'm trying to think. Um, I don't know. I can't really think of one that freaked me out when I was younger. You guys ever played the, uh, go ahead, sorry. Oh, uh, Jaden, what was your most recent thing that scared you, like, genuinely? Most recent scare? Hmm. I don't know. I don't get too scared. Like, I'm not scared of the dark, so I'm never outside and, like, freaking out. You know what I mean? See, like, in horror films, like, I don't get scared by, like, possession and demons and shit but i do get scared when it has to deal with something like personal like real something grounded like in yeah. the in the lot there's a scene in the beginning that I really went like oh shit yeah creep to me feels slightly based in reality so it kind of brought my mood down it didn't scare me but it made me feel a little bit less happy um i look at like Horror movies I've seen this month have freaked me out. I don't think there are any. Um, but like, oh, like this movie I slept on so hard. Have any of you seen the uh, like uh, Brian De Palma's Carrie in 1976? No. I like kind of just blew that off because it just seemed like you know an average horror movie. But that's like legit, like one of the best movies I've seen in a long time. Yeah. I'm gonna have to check that out. Stephen King was is responsible for so many great stuff. Yeah, he wrote Misery, Carrie. Oh, Misery is another good horror film. I haven't seen it. You didn't, you're a fan of Misery, right? Misery? Yeah, with Kathy Bates. Might be confusing me with somebody else. I haven't seen it. The one where they're in the cabin. She's like a big fan of him. Oh, the author. oh. yeah, yeah. Never mind. Uh, yeah, I like that movie. And he like snaps his um. Ankle. There's a scene where she breaks Stephen. his leg, bro. Wait, what would you say? Yeah, the Stephen King story. Yeah. You guys have a toothpaste and orange juice this week? Hmm. Uh. So that, that's like a pet peeve, right? Yeah, like basically hell, pet peeve to the max. Um, uh, people like we're doing a hybrid learning, you know, and uh, people who like just take it for granted and like wear a mask, like even teachers do it where they'll just have like their nose hanging out or they'll just like put the mask under their chin and it doesn't even do anything um that really sucks teachers do that yeah yeah what's high school like with uh covid um so there's the alphabet like the people who go in school is split between a through l and m through z so like the first two days of the week is like an a and a b day where you know the first group of the alphabet goes in school and then the other stays remote and then Wednesdays all of us are remote and then 
uh, Thursdays and Fridays, it's like everybody uh, switched, like the alphabet groups. Um, so, like, you're, you're not seeing a lot of people. And then, like, obviously, you know, we're doing social distancing. Um, there's only, like, generally, like, six people in a classroom. Um, there's lots of, like, sanitizing stuff. But um, it sucks when, like, some teachers and students will just, like, you know, violate yeah. that stupid. The whole vibe has to kind of be not the best, you know? Yeah, it's kind of empty, but it's still better than um, e-learning. I do not like e-learning at all, so. My toothpaste and orange juice involves B.S. Skinner. What's that? It was, uh... B.F. Skinner? Yeah. I don't know what that is. B.F. Skinner was a physiologist. No, no, no. I'm sorry. He used his thing called the Skinner box to examine operant conditioning in the lab with animals, you know? Uh-huh. He, and he discovered shaping. It's a process that gets animals to perform a desired behavior by like reinforcing gradually their, their behavior. Um, and they increase in complexity. They get closer and closer to the desired behavior. Um, okay. Like, they would uh, take a mouse and try to get him to pull down a lever to feed himself a little pellet or something. Huh. Right. Here's where, where we get to the toothpaste and orange juice part. His students discovered instinctive drift, which occurs when the animal, the subject, reverts to evolutionary-derived behaviors instead of demonstrating the newly learned ones, like pulling the lever. So instead of pulling the lever, maybe the mouse will just, like, roll over and be a mouse. But I just thought it was weird that they noted that his students discovered this crazy phenomenon. They had to give it an old name, instinctive drift. Like, an animal not pulling down a lever isn't that remarkable. Do we really have to name it? Hmm. They're like, they credit his students with discovering instinctive drift. Like, they drift away from the learned behavior to their instinct. I, I don't think it's... Okay, I, I guess they got to note it, but whatever. More power to them. Mo, you got a toothpaste and... <sighs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, nothing crazy happened that really made me annoyed, but I had to write an essay. What was your essay like, Chantal Ackerman. Oh, cool. Yeah. And uh, it, just, it was supposed to be a thousand words. That was shit was a drag. Yeah, that's about it. I'm just, I'm already burnt out from this e-learning and stuff. Yeah. I've only seen one Chantal Ackerman movie. And it wasn't even really a movie. It was called uh, Hotel Monterey. Have you ever seen that? No, I've never seen it. It's just a bunch of static shots of a hotel that she took. It's like completely silence. There's no music or anything. It's just a bunch of static shots of a hotel. It's like an hour long. I don't know why I watched that out of like all of her stuff, but. <laughs> I had to do it on uh, this documentary she made called News From Home. When This is when she was living in New York City and she, she was she basically it's the whole thing is. She's like showcasing New York City and her routines, but she's spreading messages from her mother back in, back from I forgot what country it was. It's it's a really sad movie. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Dude, I feel like we're gonna be in ear learning for like another year and a half at least. Fuck that, dude. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, I really loved. Uh, who came up with the Criterion Closet tweet for the? <laughs> That was, that was awesome. That was hilarious. I love that. See that 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 Twitter account. I want it to get like people who don't just listen to the podcast, but also just like shit posts. Yeah. Like what was my first tweet? I think I said, um, yeah, yeah we have found Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> um, what there was a tweet on there. It was like, uh, you guys were looking for a new host because Mo was leaving. And I'm like, Mo's leaving. What? <laughs> Zach, you don't follow the first attempt film cast Twitter account, which by the way, people go follow at attempt cast on Twitter. I 
attempt cast. I thought I did follow. I'm sorry. It's literally just me, Jaden, and Luke. Which Luke is not here today. He went missing last week. He did. And so if you know where he is, um, please do something about it. I got to pee. Have fun. Um, Harry Potter has been found dead in his Hollywood apartment. <laughs> well, I'm trying I'm gonna to find it. Now. If Moe's not on the 50th season of SNL, then I don't want it. Yes, dude, come on. By that time, I'll just make my own night live, Saturday Night Live. They're already on 46. They had um, they had casting calls a few a few months ago. I feel like you'd be a good fit. I mean, like I feel like I would. I'm just the king at like awkwardness. I could act awkward easily. I don't know. Dude, I want to do stand up. You can do stand up. Like- awesome. I love stand up. I feel like I'd be so good at it. I don't Who know. Are you guys' favorite like stand up comedians? Rami Yusuf, for sure. I don't think I know him. He's killing it right now. Um, he just got he got nominated for like two Emmys. He won the Golden Globe for Best Actor. Yeah, he's killing it right now. Wow. Which is like really awesome to see because like two years ago he was doing really small stand up comedy and now he got big really fast. What about you guys? Um, stand up comics. I'm a big fan. Not so much of his stand up. I still think he's a great stand up. But just like as a comedian, as a whole, Norm Macdonald um, is a major uh, inspiration to me. Um, I think he's probably like he's 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 got to be like the funniest comedian out there. Um, I really like Stephen Wright. I was reading somewhere. This is like a really cool insight. It's like stand up comedy, the bridge between the comic and the audience is that there's just this brick wall in front of you and you the audience and your job is to slowly take your job your job is to take down as many bricks as you can by the end of your set and sometimes you won't be able to take enough down and once to become a good stand-up comedian you have to be able to take all those brick down and that's like that's so true because the whole you just got to have a good connection with your audience really quick yeah dude i've been telling Jaden that he, he would kill it too stand-up comedy dude Jane, you got a favorite stand-up comic? I'm having a brain fart right now. I can't even think of stand-up comics. Well, I can think of a few. Name some. Hey, look up Jason Zari, though. Master of None. Oh, yeah, he's good. Have you seen Master of None? Luke? I mean, sorry, I don't know why I called you Luke. Is that? Uh, no, I have not. I know why you called him Luke. Luke's our, our uh, other host. <laughs> Luke's not missing. That's, oh, what was that's possibly why, uh, Jane. Dude, you gotta watch Master of None. You gotta watch Dark. Alright, I'm gonna go on IMDb. I'm gonna make a list right now. Um, title. Oh, hold on. I got Jaden to watch Master of None. And dude, Jaden, wasn't Master of None like such an underrated show? And you didn't even watch season two. No. Television uh, programs recommended by Mo Ali. Yes. Zach? Okay. You're our unofficial fourth host, by the way. Honestly. Oh, thank you. It's a great, grand compliment. I'm happy. I'm happy to be a an honorary host. Um. All right. So dark. So we got Bojack dark Horseman. Dark should be your number one right now, bro. Um, Master of None. All right. Anything else? Bojack. I had a Bojack. You seen Mr. Robot? Nope. <laughs> oh, I missed a robot. I feel like so like in terms of like contemporary art and the closest thing to like to go like contemporary cinema, Mr. Robot and um Master of None are really up there. But in terms of like overall show, Dark is like off the charts. It's insane. Cause Master of None takes a lot of inspiration from Italian cinema. The poster looks like it. I was thinking, like, I just looking at the poster on IMDb, it looks like Italian. Looks like freaking, uh, what's his name? Bicycle Thieves? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, the season two takes place in Italy. Vittorio but... De Seca, is that his name? The guy who did Bicycle Thieves? I forgot. Jaden, I don't think I could watch season two Master None anymore. What's up? 
I can't watch season two of Master of None. Oh, I know. It brings Dude. back. Sad. What happened? Brings back sad thoughts of us missing our Italy trip due to the pandemic. Oh, you guys were going to go to Italy? Yes. Dang. I know. Dude, it is so tragic. I was like 16 years old when I signed up for that trip. Yeah, Waited dude. two years just for it to get pulled out of the rug. Your head shape changed. Dude, my it's going to change again. <laughs> when? Give it another few months, it's going to change. You're going to have a Chad face soon. I don't think uh, Zach has ever seen me in person, but um, yeah, it's known that my head shape changes drastically every few months. It's beautiful, dude. Do you do anything to it to get it to change, or does it just naturally? No, I had braces, right, and I got my braces off, and I feel like now my my face is changing a lot because I don't have braces anymore. Uh huh. It, it's I don't know. This is a weird thing that I have. And, hey, do you, I don't know. Do you guys want to circle back to creep? Yeah, um, let's say that, let's talk about Patrick Bryce, the director. Yeah, of course so he's the a director, right? He's the one holding the camera. Yeah, he hold so, and he also directed Creep 2, which is amazing. Yeah. And he's going to do Creep 3, which is the last one. So, um, Mo, you've seen them both, which is better, Creep 1 or 2? Yeah, I like Creep 2. Memories of that class, and I credit that for, like, allowing me to get into older movies was like the first time I saw Strangers on a Train like that like blew my mind um but a lot of the movies were hit and miss because we watched like what was that one I don't know um if he showed you guys this one but it was like the one with uh Robert De Niro and it was about um like the McCarthy stuff oh yeah yeah I watched that that. wait guilty by suspicion yeah something like that I wasn't, like, really into that one at all. I think um, you tried to give us, like, a bit of a history lesson there, too, though. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think Mildred Pierce was that good. I like that one. Um, but that through that class, like, a bunch of Hitchcock stuff. We watched Sunset Boulevard. The Artist, The Graduate. That was the first time I saw The Graduate was in that class. Great. We watch a lot of movies in that class. I was happy that we did. Yeah, they could easily like have us spend more time doing unnecessary like research and homework. Yeah, yeah for real. They could have had us like make actual essays, but we didn't. Um, that that dude, class was Dave the only Ventures time. making a Strangers on Train remake. Oh, sorry, what did you say? You're good. Uh, what were you saying? Uh, David Ventures making a Strangers on a Train remake. I'm not sure how I feel about that. With Ben Affleck. Um, but no, like, for our final for that class was, like, the only one I've ever actually enjoyed. Like, I enjoyed doing the final. I wrote, like, three pages or something. It's <laughs> great. For the graduate, right. Okay, let's, let's rank Creep, okay? So our current rankings, rankings as they stand are... Number one, you got Interstellar. Number two, Good Will Hunting. Number three, Drive. Number four, I'm thinking of any things. And number five, Nightcrawler. Okay, so with Creep, do you think Creep is better than Nightcrawler? I mean, I, I don't know if I'm, like, allowed to, like, help you guys with rankings. Mo, what do you think? <laughs> That's messed up, because why is Nightcrawler underneath if I'm thinking of any things? Yeah, that was, you participated in that. I have no recollection of that, bro. I th- bro, what about Drive? So, okay, this is this is what it should be. Interstellar, Nightcrawler, Drive. No, wait. It, this movie has to be above I'm Thinking of Anything, and then Nightcrawler needs to be above Creep. Actually, no. Creep, Creep is better than Nightcrawler, but it's not better than I'm Thinking of Anything. No. I don't know. I'm screwed up. Okay. I'm going to write in the chat because I obviously cannot talk right now. Okay. What about this? Interstellar, do you think Good Will Hunting is the second best? Yeah. Me too. Okay. Yes. Even though if my, like, my vote doesn't count, but I want to I wanna participate. Just, Mo, keep in mind, we're the majority right now because Luke's not here, so whatever we say kind of goes. And then Luke can contest next week. What about uh, now we got drive i'm thinking of anything's nightcrawler and creep so what's the third best i 
drive. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep it with that. And then I'm thinking of any things Nightcrawler and Creep. The best out of those. Nightcrawler, two. Creep, I'm thinking of anything. I agree. Because it's not like we reviewed a bad movie. We need to, We almost reviewed Hubie Halloween, but... That's I want to watch that, like, really badly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Wait, so I'm thinking of anything at the bottom, right? Yeah. I don't think that's Only okay. So right now our rankings updated. Number one, Interstellar. Number two, Good Will Hunting. Number three, Drive. Number four, Nightcrawler. Number five, Creep, which we covered today. And number six, I'm thinking of ending things. Sounds good. Next week we'll be covering Robert Pattinson in The Batman. Nope. And I will show the brew that I have. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if I walked up there and they were like, all right, we're going to cast you as Bane. <laughs> uh, Bane, for sure. Due to technical difficulties, our outro got cut. But thank you for listening this week. Easy phone home, hard cut. <laughs>